Good morning. Welcome to God's house this morning as we worship on the first Sunday in Lent. As we do so, we'll follow the order of service of Holy Baptism and then common service with Holy Communion. Our theme for worship is that Jesus battles temptation. In our worship today, we will be partaking of the Lord's Supper. And so what that means is that if you are a Wells member or a, an ELS member and confirmed, we would invite you to come forward and partake of that. If you are not but are interested, please speak with me after the service. Let us join our voices together today in our opening hymn, which is, A mighty fortress is our God, and pay close attention to verse 2, where we hear of our Savior Jesus fighting against the devil.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Our Savior Jesus commanded baptism when he said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All of us are born with a deep need for baptism. From our parents, we inherit a sinful nature. We are without true fear of God and true faith in God and are condemned to eternal death. But Jesus took away our sin by giving his life on the cross. At our baptism, he clothes us with the robe of his righteousness and gives us a new life. Our sinful nature need not control us any longer, and we recall what baptism means for our daily lives as we speak these words. Baptism means that the sinful nature in us should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy and merciful God, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given us his one and only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I would invite the baptismal party forward. In obedience to the command and trusting in his promise, you have brought Ayla to be baptized. And Jesus told us, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. It is in baptism that God grants the new life of forgiveness, joy, and peace to little children. By the power of God's word, this gracious water of life washes away sin, delivers from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe. Ayla, receive the sign of the cross on your head and on your heart to mark you as a redeemed child of Christ. Ayla Diane Frauchi, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has forgiven all your sins. By your baptism, you are born again and made a dear child of your Father in heaven. May God strengthen you to live in your baptismal grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. And brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord commands that we teach his precious truths to all who are baptized. Christian love, therefore, urges all of us, especially parents and sponsors, to assist in whatever manner possible so that Ayla may remain a child of God until death. If you are willing to carry out these responsibilities, then answer yes as God gives me strength. Yes, as God gives me strength. Let us pray. 
Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of baptism by which you offer and grant salvation and forgiveness of sins. Help us to regard our baptism as the robe of righteousness that we are to wear all the days of our life. Look with special favor on Ayla and grant her a rich measure of your spirit that she may grow in faith and godly living. Make us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now in the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, our strength, the battle of good and evil rages within and around us, and our ancient foe tempts us with his deceits and empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us up again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson today will also serve as the basis of our sermon from Deuteronomy chapter 26. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. This is the word of our Lord. We continue now with our psalm of the day, which is in our gray worship supplement booklets on page 40, Psalm 14.
our second lesson from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is God's word. It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I invite you to please stand for our gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson today is when Jesus battles Satan in the gospel of Luke chapter 4 beginning at verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift, up, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his, this tempting, he left them until an opportune time. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us now join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the may be seated as we'll join to sing our hymn of the day, which is again from our worship supplement book, Christ the Lord of Hosts Unshaken.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration is from our Old Testament lesson from Deuteronomy chapter 26, our dear brother and sister in the Lord. By this time, for many of you, if you know me well, you probably know that I'm a bit of a sports geek. I find myself enjoying a good number of sporting events in the state of Wisconsin. When it comes to my Wisconsin sports teams, very often they're the only ones that ever make its way onto television. Otherwise, I really don't spend too much time watching TV. But when it comes to the Packers and the Badgers and the Brewers and the Bucks, and maybe even Marquette, if they start playing well, I would be able to watch them quite regularly. I quite enjoy watching sports. Now, when it comes to being a sports fan, though, there are kind of two types of sports fans. There are those who watch their team, and they want to watch their team against a clearly inferior team. They want to just be able to relax and watch their team annihilate their opponent so that they don't have to worry about even the possibility of their team losing. But then there's the other kind of fan. This fan really wants to have best versus the best. They want to see if their team measures up with the best in the conference or the best in the league or the best players in the league. They want to see how good their team really is. When you look at those two differences, one you could say, at least in my part, just really wants to see their team win and in one respect is just afraid of losing. In today's lesson from our gospel, we see the very nature of a best versus the best. You have the most evil and corrupt individual in the devil going against the most righteous and perfect individual in Christ. And if you were watching this battle in real time, it would have been a nail-biter because you would have heard the temptations that the devil would have brought, and you would have thought to yourself how enticing those temptations truly were. But you also would have noted how the valiant one, our mighty fortress, Jesus Christ, went against each and every one of those temptations. He resorted back to using the word of God as well as following the will of his father. And so you could see in each instance as the devil was ultimately trying to have Jesus worship him and forsake his love of the father, the Lord Jesus then reminds us as he did in our gospel lesson, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now the lesson from Deuteronomy gives us a very good reason of why we should worship the Lord our God. You see, this portion of scripture shows us all that the Lord God had done and how he fulfilled his promises to his people. And so we will see that the reason why we worship the Lord our God is because, first of all, he is a God of pure grace. Second of all, he is a God who rescues his people. And third of all, he is a God who brings each and every one of his people to paradise. Our lesson begins with these words. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. A couple of things to notice, first of all, in that opening verse. Did you notice how the Lord God revealed himself to his people? He said, you shall declare before the Lord your God. The Lord is revealing himself and reminding his people that he is the caring, 
loving and compassionate Lord, the God who is slow to anger and abounding in love and is full of his pure grace and mercy to his people. Now, maybe to you it doesn't ring in your ears, maybe as loudly as it would have for the Jews of that day. For the Jews would have remembered when they were delivered from Egypt that this is what the Lord said to them. He says in Exodus 20, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Again, reminding them, this Lord, this God, the God who is full of grace, he is the one who carried them out of Egypt. He is the one with his mighty outstretched arm delivered them. And it wasn't because the people were good, but instead it was because of God's grace. Now, if we're thinking about grace, of course it's good for us to have a working meaning, and that is God's free and perfect love for mankind, which is undeserved and unearned. When it comes to what God gives us as a gift, it is not something that we have earned. And when it came to this gift of the promised land, it is not something that the Israelites earned. Another aspect of this passage that is quite interesting is how the Lord promises out of his pure love, grace, and mercy for his people to create what was a small section of Israel into a great nation. If you recall, Jacob was Joseph's father. Joseph was in Egypt, if you remember, managing the affairs of the famine and so forth. And after Jacob realized that his son Joseph was alive, he too moved to Egypt for, safe, for safety as well as to be fed. And when he was there, the nation of Israel began. Would you believe that the nation of Israel began with only 70 people. Not necessarily a great nation, not even a great village or a great town. But yet, at the end of the time in which the Israelites were in Egypt, over 600,000 men over the age of 20 were in the Exodus, it says in the book of Numbers. That's not counting women. That's not counting children. And so you can see the Lord out of his grace and mercy and love for his promises to Jacob and to the Israelites that he took what was small and he made it great. He blessed just as he said he would and made his people great. But you might also recall when that nation started to grow in Egypt, the Egyptians didn't like this. They thought, oh my goodness, all of these Israelites around here, they're going to get mightier than us. They're going to have more children than us. They're going to take us all over. We must make them our slaves. And so that's what the Egyptians did. They enslaved the Israelites and put them to hard labor. And so the God of pure grace he heard and listened to the cries of his people. And he ultimately then is the one who rescues his people. Our lesson continues, But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror and miraculous signs. To say that the Israelites suffered would be an understatement. The Israelites were slaves for about 80 years. And so for those 80 years, it's not just as if it was at the tail end of this bondage that they started crying out for the Lord's deliverance, but it was right at the beginning. They began crying out for the Lord's deliverance ever since they were put under the bonds of slavery. And so the deliverer, of course, you might recall his name, was Moses. And Moses was the prophet of the Lord who would lead the Israelites out of Egypt by listening to the words of God and doing what the Lord God had commanded him to do. Now, it certainly probably didn't seem like the Lord was really on his game. He might have 
forgotten about his people. Eighty years is a long time. For those of you who are alive that long, you can tell us more about it. But when we think about how long that is, certainly that is a long time to be a slave. And the temptation of the people of Israel is the very temptation that the devil puts into each and every one of our minds as well. You see, the devil is always out and about to do just as he did in our gospel lesson, and that is to question whether or not God really is who he says he is in his word. The devil always wants us to come to a different conclusion, come to a different thought, think that the Lord isn't who he said he was. And so as the devil tempts Jesus for food, because the father was allegedly not going to provide for his son, for riches, because allegedly the father was not going to give all that to his son, and with the temptation of being guarded and protected as if the father was going not to take care of his own son, so too with us. The devil always is prowling around and trying to have each and every one of us look at the fact that he must be asleep at the wheel. He's not paying attention to me. He's not dealing with or rescuing me. Because sometimes it takes time. It takes longer than we're comfortable with. Maybe longer than we're comfortable with, like 80 years. But did that stop the Lord from delivering his people? Absolutely not. The God of pure grace and mercy and love, he brought about the deliverance of his people and rescued them from the hands of slavery. Now, as we look at all of these different things that the Lord God did, his people, after 80 years of slavery were faithfully and looking at him faithfully to worship the Lord their God and serve him only. They realized that it was not by their own might. It wasn't because of Moses. It was because of the Lord God that they were rescued. And so too, it was because of the Lord God that they were brought to the land of paradise. Our lesson concludes, he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Worship the Lord your God. And of course we should because he is the God of grace. He is the one who rescues us and he is the one who brings us to paradise as well. Not only did the Lord God promise that he would bring them finally to the promised land and that they would live in the land of Canaan, in a land in which the houses that were there, they didn't build, the vineyards that they had, they didn't grow. All of these blessings would be given to them. But now the Lord God reminds them that this paradise is merely temporary. The paradise that the Lord will bring all of us to is a greater paradise than we could ever imagine. And when it is all said and done, it is not because of our might. It is not because of our strength. It's not because of our goodness but it's because of God's pure grace. It's because of God's rescue plan for you that he will bring you to paradise with him. You see, the Lord Jesus, as he's being tempted in the desert, he was absolutely battling on our behalf, battling against the devil with temptations that we, sadly, have fallen for, but not Jesus. Jesus didn't fall. Jesus didn't sin. Jesus didn't stumble. Instead, the Lord Jesus took his perfect life to the Mount of Calvary and then gave it up by shedding his blood for you and me and for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of doubt that so easily wrangle us. For the sins of just laziness that overcome us. For the sins of absolute disregard that come over us. All of these sins were placed upon Jesus, and we were made his children when he bought and paid for us. We just saw today a beautiful miracle in the baptism of a little girl. That faith was created in her, and it was 
a paradise that is awaiting her. Ayla didn't do anything to become a Christian, but it is by the promise and the power of the word. It is by the calling of her Savior that she became a Christian. And so we see the evidence of God's pure grace even today. We will see it again as we partake of his body and blood given and poured out for us for the forgiveness of sins. We will see that deliverance, that rescue of us in that sacrament itself. And we will realize and taste a foretaste of the paradise that God has in store for us. Best on best. This is what we see today. The Lord God, our Savior Jesus, battling the devil and ultimately crushing him and defeating him at the cross. My friends, as we come here today, we worship the Lord our God because he is the God of pure grace. He is the one who has rescued us, and he is the one who will bring us all to paradise. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Join with me in the responsive prayer of the church that you will see on the screen. In our special prayers, we keep Doris Cartwright and Dale Zillish in our prayers, both who are ill. We keep Mrs. Bonencontro, Pastor Schneider, and Mrs. Nominson in our prayers as they deliberate calls we've extended to them. We also pray for all those affected by the war in Ukraine, and we ask the Lord to continue blessing Ed Burke in his recovery. We pray. Holy and righteous God, as we begin another, uh, the solemn spiritual journey of Lent, we come before you in deep humility. We confess that we are sinners, both by the nature we inherit and the sinful thoughts and desires, words and actions that the nature produces. Because of our sins, we deserve only your wrath and punishment. Yet you reveal yourself not only as a God of holiness and justice, but as a God of mercy and love. Despairing of our own merits and worthiness, and in response to your gracious invitation, we come pleading for your forgiveness. Lord, have mercy on us for your holy name's sake. You have revealed your love and mercy for us sinners in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. You sent him into the world to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of all people. Help us grasp by faith the great truth that that pain and suffering, the mockery and ridicule, and the death and punishment he endured should have been ours. Help us understand that in incomprehensible love he suffered and died for us. Lord, have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. In silent meditation, let us reflect on our sins, praise our Savior for the forgiveness he has won for us, and ask for God's continued grace to remove any doubt that we are forgiven. And God of grace and mercy, we look for you to bestow favor and peace and health to Doris Cartwright and Dale Zillish as they are struggling in this world. We ask that you would help them and restore them to health according to your good will. 
We also pray for Mrs. Bonencontro, Pastor Schneider, and Mrs. Namens, and all who are deliberating the calls that we have extended to them. Give them peace and confidence in where the gifts you have given them may be best used. We also pray for all those who are affected in the war of Ukraine. We ask that you would grant peace and safety to all who are affected. End the violence and grant safety to all. Finally, Lord God, we ask that you would continue the recovery of Ed Burke. We give you thanks for the successful surgery that he underwent and now ask that his care and, and love may continue to help him grow stronger each and every day. And now, God of grace and mercy, may your spirit continue to be with us as we follow the way of the cross, as we contemplate the story of our Savior's passion. Build us up in, your, in our faith. Renew us in the zeal to serve you by reflecting your love in our lives. Give us the desire and the ability to boldly proclaim the grace in which we stand, so that all for whom you lived and died may join us in fellowship now and in your presence forever. We offer our humble thanks and praise, our prayers and petitions, and ourselves in body and spirit to you, Lord God. Hear us according to your promise, for Jesus' sake. Amen. And we also join together to pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue now with the order for the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil, who overcome us by a tree, would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
The Lord's Supper is prepared. We'll partake of it by continuous flow. And again, in preparation for the supper, I would direct your attention to the questions up on the screen. For all those who are confirmed members of the Wells or ELS, I invite you to come forth and dine, for all is prepared. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the one true Christian faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. I would invite you to please stand and join with me in the Song of Simeon. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. O oh God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank, that, we thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated, and let's conclude our worship with hymn 411, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Good morning again, and welcome to God's house. A special welcome to all of our guests that we have with us this morning as well. What a full service of the means of grace and the sacrament. What a good thing it is to gather here and to be fed by the word. We have a couple of announcements. First of all, as you are now experiencing, we have a bit of a worship schedule change. You are at the 9 a.m. service. We're going to keep this as long as the voters want it. So keep that in mind. Also, we are in demo stage, as I'm sure you've noticed. So that is supposed to be wrapped up in about two weeks. So Lord willing, uh, none of that horrid, you know, torrential rainfall came through, so that was good. So now we just got to patch it up and make it pretty, and then it'll be all done. Uh, we do have some call news today. First of all, I would like to read a letter from Mrs. Nominson, who writes, Dear members of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, on Monday, February 28th, you extended a call to me to the wonderful opportunity of assisting you in the mission of carrying out Christian education at St. Paul's Lutheran School. This calling reflects the importance you have placed on Christian education and the ensuring that future generations know and trust the saving message of the gospel. As we begin our Lenten journey, we see all that Jesus has done for our salvation. His redeeming work gives us the confidence to meet every challenge as we journey through our time of grace. I appreciate any prayers that are offered as I deliberate this call and my current call at Holy Cross. Many things are happening in our world, and it constantly is changing. It is good to know that God is in control, and he will see us through. He guides and protects us in the way that he knows is best for us and for his kingdom. Please keep me and my family in your thoughts as we ask for the Lord's guidance in the deliberation of this call. In Christ's service, Mrs. Diane Nominson. Also from the pastor that we have called, Pastor Dave Schneider, who writes, Dear members of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, thank you for the honor and privilege of considering serving among you at St. Paul's. We will begin our deliberations and welcome your prayers. I am looking at the needs of both Cross of Christ and St. John's congregation and considering the particular gifts that God has given me for serving in the ministry. During the next several weeks, I welcome any thoughts that you may have concerning the ministry needs at your congregation. Let's pray together with confidence that he will lead us to a decision that serves his kingdom best. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. In Christ alone, Pastor Dave Schneider. Uh, you might recall, if you're at the voters' meeting, that we also called Mr. Seth Fitzsimmons to be our principal. He acknowledges receipt of the call, and then in an unorthodox way, but pretty normal in these times, I suppose, also a return of that call. Uh, just a further explanation of that. His school is currently going through accreditation, has several vacancies on the staff, and so as he received the call, uh, he looked for guidance, but then realized that it would be putting his congregation and his school into a position that he would not want to put them in. So he returned the call quickly so that we also would have an opportunity to extend a call. So our eyes are on March 20th. That's what we're hoping for. We are still awaiting CLS, Commission on Lutheran Schools, permission for that. Finally, you can see we have a boys basketball update. Our A team is at state. They won their first game, lost their second game, won their third game, which puts them in the fifth place game today. I believe the game is at 1215 at Concordia uh, College in Mequon. So if you would like to make the journey out there, it's about an hour and 15, hour and 25, depending on how you drive and how quickly you can get there. But it should be a, a good game. And so that is our A-team boys, and so they could be the fifth best Lutheran team in the state. So that's pretty cool. So. Aside from that, Bible study will take place in here. we got snacks outside the door. You can bring them on in here with your coffee once we have Bible study and the baptismal party. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, and enjoy your time of fellowship with family and friends. God's blessings to you guys.